Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we are going to discuss about the construction of an ellipse by eccentricity method. The given question is, we have to construct an ellipse when the distance of the focus from the directrix is equal to 50 mm and the eccentricity is 2 by 3. Before going into the actual construction, let's discuss some of the basics. There is a fixed point called focus and there is a varying point or moving point let's take it as point p which is having the values of x and y as a coordinate depends upon its position so this point p can move anywhere but whereas this focus is a fixed so always it will be in the same location and there is a fixed line it is known as the directrix if i join point s and p we get the distance sp and this point p we have to join to the directrix perpendicularly and let's name this meeting point as m so we get the distance pm and this is joined perpendicularly now the ratio between sp and pm it is known as the eccentricity now let's come to an ellipse let's take a small diagram we have horizontal axis and vertical axis and we have an ellipse like this this ellipse will have two vertices so let's take this is v and this is v dash and we will be having two focus. Let's take this as F1 and F2. And there are two directrices on either side of the ellipse. So we have completed the rough diagram. Now let's take any point on the ellipse P. This is a varying point. So if we join this f1 p this f1 is like the point s here it is a focus its position is always at the same place then if i join point p to the directrix perpendicularly and let's take this meeting point as m so here we have the ratio f1 p by pm and this is the eccentricity and the question they have given the eccentricity is 2 by 3 in the same way the point p can move anywhere suppose if the point p comes here we can join f1 p like this and p m like this so f1 p and p m like this in the same way, if the point P comes to the vertex, now we can join F1 P like this. Then we can join P M like this. So this will be our M. This eccentricity is always constant. Wherever the point P is there, always that f1 p by pm is always constant and the constant is 2 by 3 now the point p when coincides with the vertex this is like a special case so pm we have and f1 p we have from this ratio we can find the distance that is f1 p is 2 and pm is 3 so this line segment we are going to divide it in this ratio f1 p is here so this will be two part and pm this will be three part so totally we have two plus three five part this value two and three we have taken from this ratio pm is three and f1 p is two so we have plotted the 
ratio in this straight line. Now these are the basics we are going to apply while construction. Now in the question they have given the distance of the focus from the directrix is 50 millimeter. Now the ratio we had here is 2 is to 3 like this and this entire distance is 50 millimeter. So totally this is 50 mm that is from here to here. This is 50 mm. So out of this 50 mm, 3 part is here and 2 part is here. It means this part is 30 mm and this part is 20 mm. Out of this 50 millimeter, it is divided in the ratio 3 is to 2. So this PM is 30 mm and FMP is 20 mm. Let's start the construction. Now as a first part, we have to draw a vertical line which is known as the directrix which is a fixed line. Then we have to draw a horizontal line which is known as the axis and we name this point as A. Now we have to keep a scale and in the question it is given that the distance from the directrix to the focus is 50 millimeter which is 5 centimeter. So we have 5 centimeter here. Let's draw a vertical line here. And also we saw the ratio that is from this F1 and let's name this as F1 first. Here it is F1. This F1 to vertex is 20 mm. Then from the vertex to the A is 30 mm. So at 20 mm from F1 let's draw a vertical line like this. This is the vertex. And let's name this point as V. So in the question they gave 50 mm. So now we got this as 30 mm and this as 20 mm. Now let's keep the compass at this position V at the point V and measure what is Vf1. Then with this measurement we have to cut an arc by keeping the compass at V here and let's name this point as E. So what we have done is we measured Vf1 with the same measurement V as center, we cut an arc. Now we are going to join AE and not only that, we are going to extend. After this, let us keep the scale. Then after the vertex, like with equal gap, let us draw the vertical lines. So let us draw the vertical line at 4 cm like this. Similarly, already at 5 cm line is there. Then passing through at 6 cm. Then passing through 7 cm. Then passing through 8. Then 9. Then passing through 10. Then passing through 11 then passing through 12, 13. So till this enough. Now let us remove the scale and we have to name all these points. So already V and F1 we named. Let us take this as 1, then 1 dash. Then this is 2, 2 dash. Then this is 3, 3 dash. 4, 4 dash. 5, 5 dash, 6, 
six dash seven then seven dash then this is eight eight dash nine nine dash ten ten dash even we can make few more lines so this is 11 11 dash 12 12 dash now we have to take a compass and measure what is the measurement of 1 1 dash by keeping the compass at 1 let's measure 1 1 dash now with this measurement we have to cut an arc by keeping the compass at f1 so if i cut an arc here so i have to cut an arc on 1 1 dash one on the top and other on the bottom so here so i repeat again this point we have measured 1 1 dash with that measurement we kept the compass at f1 and we cut the arc at 1 1 dash line and this point can be named as p1 and this is p1 dash in the same way let's take the compass and let's keep it at point 2 and we have to measure how much is 2 2 dash let's keep it like this after measuring this 2 2 dash we have to keep the point, compass at f1 and cut an arc on the 2 2 dash line but that will be at the same point 2 dash it will cut the arc and one on the top and other at the bottom like this and here we have to name this point as p2 dash and this is p2 so we have to repeat the procedure let's keep the compass at point 3 and measure how much is 3 3 dash now with this measurement we have to keep the compass at focus f1 and we have to cut an arc in the line 3 3 dash one on the top and other on the bottom so here and we have to name this point as p3 and this is p3 dash now let's keep the compass at the point 4 let's measure what is the measurement 4 4 dash and this measurement we have to cut an arc on the same line by keeping the compass at f always cutting the arc by keeping the compass at the focus so we have to cut an arc one on the top and other on the bottom on the same line that is 4 4 dash line so we cut an arc and as usual let's name this point as p4 and this is p4 dash now coming to the next point so keep the compass at the point 5 and measure how much is 5 5 dash now keeping this measurement keep the compass at the focus f1 and now we have to cut the arc at the f5 5 dash line so one on the top and other on the bottom so here and as usual we name this as p5 and this is p5 dash similarly let's keep the compass at the point 6 and measure how much is 6 6 dash then keeping this measurement and let's keep the compass at the point f1 and cut an arc in that 6 6 dash line one in the top and other at the 
bottom. So here we cut the arc. In the same way, let's cut the arcs on the other lines also. So it will be coming like this. And in the last part, we will be getting only one arc like this. And again, let's name this as P7, P7 dash and so on. After this, we have to draw a smooth curve joining all the points. And there should not be any sharp bends. So we have to draw a smooth curve like this. And finally, it will join with point P12. Let's name this point as P12 here. Then in the same way, below the axis also, we have to join. So joining all this thing will complete the ellipse. If there is any sharp bends, then that should be corrected. So here we see the sharp bend. Here also there is a sharp bend. So all this thing should be corrected by the smooth curve. Once the smooth curve is drawn, we get the perfect ellipse. After this, the other end, we have to name it as the vertex V dash. Already this is one vertex, this is another vertex V dash. And we have a directrix here. Let's take this line as CD. So we will be having one more directrix on the other side. And we have to measure from here, from vertex to this measuring this distance and with the compass and the same measurement is done here so that we can locate the position of the other directrix. So let's name this as C dash and D dash. So we got the other directrices, other directrix and the other vertex also. Now let's see how to draw a tangent to this ellipse. Suppose, if I want a tangent at a particular point, for example, P3. So we have to join this point to the focus first. Then from this point, we have to draw a perpendicular line to this P4 F1. And our perpendicular line will be something like this. And we have to locate a point where it meets the directrix. Then from this point, if I draw a line, that will form the tangent to the ellipse. This line is the tangent. So again, I repeat the procedure. The point where we have to draw the tangent, the point at where we have to draw the tangent, we have to join that point to the focus. And from the focus, we have to draw a perpendicular line, that is 90 degree line, to meet the directrix. Let this be some point Q. Then this Q and P4, if I join, that gives the tangent. And if you want normal, a perpendicular line to this tangent passing through this point will be our normal. So it will be perpendicular to the tangent. And this line is the normal. We can also locate the other focus that is from the vertex to this focus. The same measurement I have to keep from this and I can locate the other focus which is at the point here and let's name this as F2. And thus we have completed the construction of ellipse along with the drawing of tangent and normal.